In this video, we're going to do three more proofs of theorem. So we're going to show that P arrow Q arrow P is a theorem, P arrow Q arrow R arrow P arrow Q arrow P arrow R is a theorem, and P arrow Q arrow not Q arrow not P is a theorem. You'll notice that all of these are conditionals, so we're going to be using a lot of CPs to do this. Hopefully by the end of the video, you will be very comfortable with doing CPs and know how to do all of these proofs with conditionals. So the first one is P arrow Q arrow P. I'll use lines for each of these. What we're going to start with is an assumption of P because we need to do if P then Q and then P. So this will be a hypothesis for a conditional proof. So I don't think we're gonna need too many lines for this one. Uh, in line two, what we're going to do is we're going to assume Q for a CP. So the reason we're doing this is because first we have to assume this left thing to get the Q arrow P, but then we have to assume Q to do Q arrow P. Okay, so in line three, let me set up this thing here. So we're gonna need probably two lines there, which means I'll have to extend this out by one. Okay, in three, I'm going to reiterate P from line one. So one, there's reiteration. Okay, well now we have a proof of Q, or a proof from Q to P, line two to three. So we can pull Q arrow P out in line four. So this is from two to three, a conditional proof. And now in line five, well, we assumed, let me just make this a little bit nicer. We assumed that we had P and we got Q arrow P from it. So using a conditional proof, we now have if P, then Q arrow P. So that's from one to four, and that's a conditional proof. Okay, that one, not too bad. In fact, I think uh, we've seen things very similar to this, but this is how we do P arrow Q arrow P, so we can use this anytime that we want. Okay, this one, if we have P, then Q, then R, then we have the fact that if P Q, then P R. Okay, so this one a little bit longer, but the same idea. First, we're going to assume P arrow Q arrow R for conditional proof. Then we'll assume P arrow Q to get that conditional going. And then we'll assume P to get that final conditional going. And then when we use CP three times, we should get our final result. So in line one, I am going to assume P arrow Q arrow R. This is a hypothesis, and this is specifically for conditional proof. Who knows how long this has to go? Let's say that's good enough. Okay, in line two, I am going to assume P arrow Q. This is another hypothesis, and this is for CP. Okay, this one, I don't know how long it'll be. Let's say that's fine. And finally, in line three, what I'll do is I'm going to assume P. Once again, for CP, uh, CP, having some difficulties remembering what's a bracket and what's a letter. Okay, there we go. And this will probably take well, up to about here, perhaps. Okay, so we've essentially just assumed all of the consequence that we'll need. So what I'll do now is in this subproof, I'm going to reiterate P arrow Q. So this comes from line two, this is a reiteration, because that way I can then use modus ponens on lines three and four to get me Q. Okay, but I need to get R in the subproof. I need to show that if I have P, I get R. So what I'm going to do in line six is I'm going to reiterate line one for P arrow, Q arrow, R, because I, I can get an R out of this. As long as I have a P, as long as I have a Q, I can get R. So from line one, I'm doing reiteration. In line seven, I'm applying modus ponens from line three to line six, so P, and then if P, then Q, then R, to get Q, then R. So this is from three and six, this is modus ponens. Okay, now I can do modus ponens again to get R. I have Q and I have Q arrow R, therefore I can get R. So that is line five and line seven, and that is modus ponens. Okay, so now I've shown that if I have P, then I get R. So I can pull this out using CP. So in line nine, we say that from two to 
or not from 2 to 8, from 3 to 8, we did a conditional proof. We assumed p, we showed that we can get r, therefore we have p arrow r. Now in line 10, we can do another conditional proof, because we show that if we have p then q, then we have p then r. So if p then q, then we have p then r. This is from line 2 to line 9, and this is a conditional proof. Okay, finally, we can now finish this. We can pull this out. Because we assumed p arrow q arrow r, we've shown that then we get p arrow q arrow p there, arrow p arrow r. Therefore, we're going to get that if we have uh, p arrow q arrow r, then we're going to get p arrow q arrow p arrow r. And this is from 1 to 10. And this is a conditional proof. So that would be the proof of p arrow q arrow r, arrow p arrow q, arrow p arrow r. So basically we just keep doing conditional proofs until we get what we want. And we're very lucky that because these are conditionals, we just have to keep applying modus ponens. So MPs and CPs. That's the name of the game when these theorems just have arrows in them. Okay, we'll do one more. p arrow q arrow not q arrow not p. So basically this just says that the conditional gives us the contrapositive. So we've seen this proof with modus tollens. In fact, we can use modus tollens in this to make this a lot easier. So in line one, uh, we're going to assume p arrow q. This is going to be a hypothesis for a conditional proof. I don't think this is going to be very long at all. So let's just make it like this. Uh, in line two, so we've assumed this part. Now we need to assume the antecedent inside the second conditional. So we're going to assume not q. So it's another hypothesis for a conditional proof. Okay, so what I'm going to do in line three is I'm going to reiterate p arrow q. So that way we can use it in our sub proof. So this is one reiteration. And now I have modus tollens. So if we remember, we proved earlier that the sequent p arrow q and not q, let's just say not p. We've done this proof twice in this playlist so far, so you can check out uh, Natural Deductive Proofs number two for that, as well as one of the practice exercise videos I just showed. I think of the derivable rules number one or number two it is shown. Okay, so this means that then in line four, we can write not p. So this comes from 2, 3, and this is modus tollens, so that's abbreviated MT. If you can't use it again, we have a proof of that in the other videos that you can check out. Okay, this means that in line 5, we assume not Q, we got not P, therefore we have not Q arrow not P. This is from 2 to 4, and this is a conditional proof, which means then that in line 6, well, we assume P arrow Q, from that we got not q arrow not p, so we can use the conditional proof to say that if we have p then q, then we have not q then not p. So from 1 to 5, this is a conditional proof. And that is the proof of p arrow q arrow not q arrow not p. So what I want to show and what I want to say is that these three things uh, these comprise uh, three axioms. So some systems would call, I should really be more specific, uh, this one A1, this one A2, and this one A3. And basically, from these three, along with uh, the contradiction symbol, the arrow, and P's and Q's, you can derive literally every single theorem in logic using just these three. So whatever you need to prove in logic, using just these three axioms, you can prove everything. It is not easy, but it is doable. So it's kind of a fun fact. I took a course in this in my university. It was called axiomatic logic. And basically, we spent three or four weeks proving a lot of stuff with these three things. Uh, hopefully, you don't have to do that. It's a horrible experience. But it is doable, and it's important for understanding the meta theory of these things. So if you have any questions, as always, you can post them in the comments below. And I'll get back to you when I can.